Arduino for Beginners, Episode 13. Serial Communication Between Two Arduino Boards. Now, this tutorial will be on wired serial communication between two Arduino boards. In the next video, we will be doing wireless, um, specifically Bluetooth. So um, if you're looking for that, just skip to the, the next video. But uh, the sketch we are using to control these will be, it's the identical sketch for both. It's just uh, we will be connecting them serially two different ways. And like I said, in, in this video, it will be wired communication. Now there's lots of different uh, applications where you'd want to have two Arduino boards be able to communicate with each other. Maybe you have a really big project where you need a lot of pins and well maybe you don't have a mega or you've got uh, two different things that are going to be controlled by Arduinos that are going to be a little bit uh, away from each other and each need their own microcontroller but they also need to communicate with each other to uh, tell them to do different things so either way um, in this one we're going to just do a simple uh, show you how to hook this up in some of the later videos we will get into um, some more complicated things to do with this but for this one what we're going to do is we're going to use a push, bu push button switch with the one Arduino. And I've got an Uno here and a Dmitinova. I think they pronounce that here. It, any two Arduinos, it don't matter which one, they, you can wire communicate serially between the two. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the push button on this one. And when it uh, reads that the push button's been pushed, it's going to send a message to the other Arduino board, and we're going to have it turn on LED. Now this LED is optional because your um, Arduino board generally, unless uh, I think all Arduino boards actually have a built-in LED, but we're going to use this uh, one on the pin 13, which is connected to the onboard LED, just so you can see it easier in the tutorial. But if you go ahead and build this to try it out, um, don't worry about the LED. You will be able to see on your board there is an LED. But All right, well, let's um, just get down and hook this up. And then after that, we'll go over to the computer and run through the sketches on these. So, um, well, first, I'm going to take the push button. And I'm using pin 13 on this because there's a ground pin right next to it. You can use any pin that you want. Just in the sketch, change, you know, which digital pin you want to use. Like I said, I'm using th 13 on the Uno here because there is a ground pin right next to it. And we want one one side of the switch to pin 13 and the other to ground because when we uh, get into the sketch we're going to be detecting if um, the button's pushed it's going to be detecting that pin is going low because we're going to use the pull up uh, resistors that are built in. Then on the um, second board once again I'm using pin 13 you want the long side um, is generally your positive and I'm going to put that in 13 and then once again the ground is right next to it so the LED pops right in. Now, um, I've actually already loaded the sketch on these. Um, before you connect the, um, the serial communication, you will want to plug in and load up your transmit sketch on the one and receive sketch on the other. And also, just to let you know, you could also put a push button on this one and LED on this one. So you push this one to turn the LED on there. You, I mean, it's communication both ways, not just one. But just for this demonstration, we just got one LED and one push button. So you see down here pin 0 and pin 1, the digital pins. One says RX and one says TX. So we're going to put our two jumper wires in the RX and TX. Now the bottom one on here is the RX. So on this board, we want that to go to TX. And then the TX on this board goes to the RX on the other board. You want to swap the two of them. So your RX goes to the TX and your TX goes to the RX. If you hook your RX and RX together and TX and TX transmit together, it, it's not going to work. That's all there is to it. All right, well, let's go ahead and power these up. I got my USB cable to power the one. All right, and then I've got uh, an external wall wart here to plug the other one in. All right, they're both up and running. And as you can see, I pushed the button and the LED came on. I 
push it again, it goes out. Now I used um, in the, the sketch itself. Oh. oh, I was playing with the wires there and it was accidentally reading and sending it was high and low. That's all that was. Just a loose connection. That's why it was flashing there for a second. That does happen once in a while. But that was just a loose connection. But um, I did a debounce for the button in the sketch. And all I did is after it detects the button goes low, it just puts a, I think I put like a quarter second delay in there. So actually, if you did hold it down, now you see the LED is flashing. And you let off, it quits. But if you just push it and you let off within a quarter of a second, it'll stay at whatever position it was at. And then once again, I think I have like a, a quarter of a second delay in the, the sketch while it's reading to see if the button is being pushed. And that's just for stability and stuff. But yeah, we'll get to that in just a moment here. Well, actually, why don't we, we um, just go over to the computer and uh, check out the sketch for this. So I'll catch you there in just a second. All right, uh, I got the uh, Arduino IDE opened up here. Now I went ahead and uh, I already got both of these typed up, uh, make it go a little quicker. If I go through a little too fast for you, if you're trying to type this in as going along with the video, um, just look in the description below and you can go to the uh, website and um, both these sketches will be on there and all the information related to this project. Once again, just look in the description below and you can copy and paste it in your Arduino ID if you'd like, but uh, uh, I do recommend typing it in because that actually does help you learn this a little. It kind of burns it in your, your brain as you're typing it in. So I do recommend, you know, type it in, but whatever way you want to do, I mean, just go and copy and paste if that's all you want. But all right, let's get into it here. Uh, what we're doing first, and this is the uh, the transmitter, this is the, the one with the push button. So what we're doing first is we're defining, uh, we're putting the push button on pin 13. So we're defining that push button 13. And again, if you want to put the button on a different uh, di digital pin, go ahead, just change the 13 to whatever pin you're putting it on. Then in the void setup, we're starting the serial, so we're doing the serial.begin, and I'm running the 9600, which is a very common baud rate. Um, if Once again, if you want to change this to a higher rate, you want this to transmit and receive even quicker, go ahead, just make sure both boards' sketches have the same baud rate. Then we're setting the pin mode, uh, the button, and we're calling the pull-up resistor, so it'll be an input and then the pull-up, which turns the pull-up resistors on that are built into the Arduino. Then uh, we're going down here to the void loop. And what we're doing is we're doing an if. The, we're doing a digital read. The button, which is the push button on 13, equals low, which means the button has been depressed. It is serial writing, serial.write. Don't use a serial.print or serial.print line. That won't work for this feature. There are circumstances where you will use that but for this no you want the serial dot right and I'm just sending a value of 100 once again you can change this value just make sure on the receiver on the other end that you're detecting for you have it so it's looking for the same number so say you wanted to use one or two or 1000 whatever just make sure on the other end it's looking for that and then I got a delay. Okay, I guess I have a half a second delay here. And that's just to debounce the button. So when you push it, you got, you know, a little time to let go of it. And it's not just repeatedly turning that uh, off and on. This could be changed down to a quarter second. You should be fine. If you went down to like 10 milliseconds, which would be a 10 here, you're probably going to push it by the time you let off. It would detect it's being pushed a couple of times. And then in the program itself, we're doing a delay of 100. That's just, it's delaying the program. If it's not reading the button low, it just stops for 100 milliseconds and then goes back through and goes back through and just keeps going and going and going. And this is for stability. This delay, you actually, you could probably get away with like 10. Um, I would put an absolute minimum of 5. 
um, even no matter what you're sending. It just it adds stability. So the program, the sketch isn't running at like Mach 10. Um, but that's all up to you what you want to put in there. I mean, it will work with zero, but it does run a little smoother with a minimum of 10. I just chose 100. It works. All right. Well, this is all you need for the transmitter. All right, uh, sorry, uh, my screen capture program glitched out there, but we got her back up. Okay, um, now we are taking a look at, uh, this is the receiver side. So this would be the uh, Arduino board that we had the LED on. So right here, we're defining LED on pin 13. Once again, whatever pin you want to have it on, just change this. It's all up to you. Then we have here, we have an integer. Um, called value. We have an integer called state. Um, now the value is um, the number that we're sending from the other one. This is where that's going to be stored. And the state is just, it's storing a one or a zero and it starts at zero. That's why there's no number after it. And that's just uh, zero means the LED was off, one means the LED was on, and that's how we can switch it off and on down here with our if statements. Now, then in um, our setup, again, we've got the serial dot begin. And remember, if you change your baud rate, make sure you change it on both boards. Uh, on this one, we got the pin mode set found for the LED is an output, of course. Then uh, we're digitally writing LED low just to make sure it's off, just in case something glitches out. Um, you actually could probably skip this and be fine. I just like to throw it on there just to make sure it doesn't accidentally is on when uh, the program and everything loads up. So now down in the void loop, we're doing if a serial dot available, which it's checking the serial port, and seeing if um, there is something there, which means it is greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, means there is something there to read. Then it's going in and it's setting the val, our integer up here, to read that number, or the value that was sent, and it's being stored in the val. Then next, we're checking if um, the value, the number that was received, equals 100 which is what we were having the transmit board send when the push button is pushed. And the state equals zero, which means the LED was off. Then it digitally writes the LED high. Then we do the state equals one. So now that it know, it'll know it's on. And then we're doing a delay of a quarter second, 250 milliseconds. Otherwise, else if the value equals 100 and the state equals one, which means the LED was already turned on, then it's digitally writing LED low and it sets the state to zero. So the next time the button's pushed, it knows to turn it on. And then of course, again, another quarter second delay. Um, the delays up to you how long you want. I just put the delays in there. It kind of helps the program run a little smoother and it's not running at warp speed. That's all there really is to it. On the receive end, you probably could do no delays and be fine. But my personal preference is even no matter what, I'd put like a, a five, five milliseconds or 10 milliseconds. It just helps things run a little smoother. If you're not understanding why, there are other videos um, on YouTube about you know the stability to keep the the program running nice and smooth and that's why we're using the delays but yeah that's uh, all there is to this uh, I hope this information helped you out um, if it did hey give me a thumbs up I'd appreciate it big time and also um, both these sketches the receiver transmit that'll all be on the website just look in the description below there's a link that will bring you right to this project's web page and um, also, the next episode, we will be covering, um, and we'll be using the same sketch. Nothing's changed. All we're doing is instead of wired communication, we are going to use the HC06 and an HC05. You have to have actually both. 
You can't use two HC06s. You can use two HC05s because you can set uh, the HC05 can be slave or master, where the HC06 can only be slave. So you have to have at least one HC06 for the next tutorial, and that'll be the Bluetooth communication between the two boards. So, all right, um, I'm just going to wrap this up then. Um, please subscribe, and uh, I hope to see you here again on uh, episode 14, uh, Serial Communication Wireless Bluetooth. So, hey, I hope you have a great day, and remember, have fun building.